Um, okay, we will now continue with the program, and with us is Eva Cukic from Belgrade, from uh, Ministry of Space. It's not really a ministry, <laughs> it's more an NGO, but uh, she will present herself better. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Irena. Uh, so, hello to everyone. My name is Eva Cukic, and I'm coming from the Collective Ministry of Space from Belgrade. Uh, and you can see the poster of one of our interventions over there. It's a street gallery. Um, we have a long experience uh, in occupying different public or private spaces, making them, turning them into social or cultural centers. And that one is uh, actually the first legal thing that we did, change the bureaucracy system in, in some small scale uh, into uh, the, the, the way that the uh, municipality government uh, uh, can uh, let a, a civic initiative to run some public space for temporary time. But actually in Serbia it's not regulated at all. It's just um, uh, the, the thing of the political will and your uh, negotiation skills. Uh, so I decided then to uh, do a bit more of research, how it functions in other countries, and then I did my uh, PhD about the institutionalization of temporary use, uh, which I'm finishing now. My deadline is in nine days, so yeah, I'm a bit in panic, <laughs> but okay. Uh, so um, it won't be full of images, this presentation. I hope it won't be boring for you, um, but it's, um, there are some interesting examples that we can uh, learn from. Uh, so the um, contemporary uh, literature that I was uh, reading about the temporary uses is actually f defining them as a physical manifestation uh, or unplanned interventions that are happening in the urban structure. And they are not considered as a regular part of the urban development. So they are uh, short-term short events um, that are um, trying to become a permanent activity and it usually happens if it gets some uh, greater popularity. Uh, and the, the, it changed the image of the, um, of the city. But also in some countries it is a part of informal planning instruments, which I think that in Croatia don't exist, uh, because in Serbia they don't exist as well. Um, so they are uh, based on the do-it-yourself uh, uh, philosophy, and they are usually defined as um, parts of the new types of informal urbanism. So do-it-yourself urbanism, bottom-up, guerrilla, community-oriented, grassroots, handmade, uh, and even of the wider phenomenon, which is called tactical urbanism and um, everyday uh, urbanism. And the aim of those interventions is to improve or to contribute to the urban development uh, issues. So uh, those activities are mostly, uh, can be run uh, commercially uh, to be, uh, let's say, part of the formal or gray uh, economy or can be non-profit and then uh, actually uh, not belong to the system of uh, monetary exchange. Um, one of the first uh, studies um, uh, about, it was a large-scale uh, European research, uh, Studi Urban Catalyst from Technical University in Berlin actually made the five categories of temporary users that are coming uh, mostly from the civil sector. So we have startups, migrants, system refugees, dropouts, and part-time activists. It's uh, very important now to, uh, to, to say that they, uh, all of these um, categories are coming from not official, uh, let's say outside of the official and institutionalized um, domain of urban planning. So um, after that, there was another uh, study called Temporary City by Bishop and Williams who are making actual the typology based on the planners and architects and practitioners who are now involved into the temporary use and uh, want to make it uh, as a part of the urban development policies. So we have these six categories, uh, creative mil milieus, they are like something that we already mentioned several times based on the creative industry. Uh, phenomenon and creative city idea, then activist and uh, community uses, which are more community-oriented uh, projects. They can be urban gardening, squatting, uh, social centers, etc. Places for the independent culture and counterculture, uh, then urban spaces, which are actions in the public spaces. Uh, one can include also kind of protest and being in the public space for a longer time. Then uh, category of consumerism, the pop-up uh, shops, uh, pop-up restaurants, they're very common for the UK, uh, and the private sector initiatives. Uh, and basically this um, uh, typology is uh, very common, is based on the 70 case studies mostly from UK. 
and this the 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 sixth one is very interesting because um, I don't know if you have it uh, in Croatia, but there is in UK the taxes for uh, not used property, and they are super high. Uh, so actually, the private sector is forcing temporary use in order to reduce uh, their taxes. Um, there is also another kind of topology. I don't know if you can see them. The difference between the ephemeral inter, uh, uh, uses and uh, interim interuses, like in between. And then the first one is initiated by the bottom-up uh, initiatives, mostly artists or community organizations. They can be legal or illegal. And the in-between are mostly coming from the public sector, from the entrepreneurs, government, property owners, and they are usually legal. Um, and the, the, the tools are different policies and strategies. So. Um, uh, as we all know, the European Union, the, the, the actually the temporary uses are becoming part of the, let's say, urban regeneration uh, program. Um, so uh, the European Union already did a lot of research and uh, definitions in the last 25 years about the phenomenon of urban regeneration. But in the last few years, we have three different action fields. Uh, that are coming, um, that are funded by EU. Uh, the first one is research that I mentioned that uh, that came from the Technical University uh, in Berlin. The full name is Strategies for Temporary Uses, Potential for Development of Urban Resi uh, Residual Areas in European Metropolis. And they are doing studies in the case studies in the six different cities. Then another thing is uh, supporting transregional exchange and implementation activities. And then through the Interreg uh, program, they finance the uh, research called SEEDS uh, from the University of Sheffield. And uh, through the Urban Act, there was a tutor, uh, temporary use as a tool of urban regeneration, which was implemented in Bremen, Roma, and Alba Iulia. Uh, actually, the seeds is uh, and also the tutor are um, b uh, made as um, um, they are tested like on the ground examples, which are trying to uh, make the collaboration between the city officials, civic initiatives, entrepreneurs, owners, planners, uh, different chambers, and citizens. And uh, what uh, those studies uh, show is that, uh, and also, yeah, I didn't mention the different funds that are helping it. Uh, and what those studies show is that usually the government, uh, it's, it's a top-down process making a kind of the agency, which is a mediator between the temporary users and, uh, and the owners, which can be public sector or private sector. Uh, and the three, well, the best known examples are mean, Meanwhile Space, then the ZZZ in Bremen, and then, now uh, I cannot read this word, in Berlin. Mm. Thank <laughs> um, And uh, the, the, the one that I mentioned in, in London is actually social uh, enterprise. And they helped, uh, they started I think in 2009. And until now they held more than 500 initiatives, uh, making around 200 jobs and also saving around 700,000 uh, pounds to the private owners uh, out of the taxes that I mentioned. Um, uh, so they're, um, uh, the, the, the things that they are doing, they are uh, making the connections between the um, owners and the ones who want to use the space. They are also as, uh, making a support, they are um, used as a consulted body and initiate diverse projects. So their, uh, their obligation is to search for a space, uh, to map them, to uh, ask for permissions, to work with the local community, to, make the, the, to find the money for, uh, for funding, to network uh, with the different uh, stakeholders, and finally to make the evaluation uh, and reports about the whole project. So one of the um, uh, cases uh, that I would like to, to show actually is uh, that uh, the temporary uses are embraced by the German uh, urban policy. Um, so they are the, 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 the most uh, known uh, and the, 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 the examples that are uh, working are in Bremen and in Berlin. So I will just briefly pass through those, um, to those examples. So in Bremen, there is the agency that I uh, mentioned. And uh, they are actually presented as a, uh, uh, from the city of Bremen as a soft um, urban policy that provoke uh, transformation of abandoned areas. 
Uh, there are also uh, policy cross-cutting other planning instruments. Uh, and it's considered as a um, informal planning instrument, and it promotes uh, the, the agencies promote socio-economic and cultural instance within the city, and it also uh, makes a balance between the bottom-up um, instances. Uh, the time frame uh, of the practice, so the the, the 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 whole idea was initiated by the Department of the Economics in Bremen. And the funding was uh, for two periods, one three years and another four years, from 2009 to 2016. And the first, um, in the first period, 50% was founded by the municipality of uh, Bremen and the Federal Ministry of uh, Transport, Building and Urban Development, and the rest of it uh, by the municipality. And the operational program is on municipality level. So it's very important to understand that uh, even if it becomes uh, the, the part of the urban policy or the planning system, the municipality is the level that you can work with and have the most, uh, um, the, 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 the biggest influence. It's like the first instance that you can contact. Um, so the, yeah, uh, I hope you can see this. Uh, so the funders are Department of Economy and Ports Bremen. They support the creative industry and startups. Then the Department for Environment, Constructions and Transport, the Department for, uh, for Finance in Bremen. And, uh, in decision making, the, the included department is the uh, Department of Culture, then the promotion of trade and the industry Bremen, and then the real estate uh, Bremen. And the end user can be a single uh, person or a group interested in a low rent uh, space. The whole idea was initiated uh, for only one project, and let me see the name. Aha, um, uh -huh, it was Uberzestad. But then uh, they decided to implement it uh, all around the, the city. Uh, so the city is helping the agency by funding the agency to support the programs, providing the spaces, uh, by making the personal su uh, support, and uh, very often the meetings with them. Uh, and to support uh, them with uh, informations and um, permissions. So the coordination, as we mentioned, is already uh, the, the, those three departments. And uh, the uh, agency is made by four people who are nonstop uh, there. So the structure looks uh, like this. You have a steering group, which is the coordinator of the agency. Those departments and the real estate Bremen are included in two steering groups. They have seven members. And on this side is a consultation body that comes from the adv uh, advisory board with five members from the municipality housing company, uh, represent owner representation of Bremen, Center for Built Environment Bremen, Chamber of Architects, and Association of Cultural and Creative Industries. Um, I just uh, I, I haven't read the report about the results from 2015, uh, but Urban met them uh, I think in Tallinn uh, last weekend, so maybe he can uh, share. Uh, the information that he uh, got from from them. Um, another case uh, is uh, Berlin. Uh, so they also um, they also have uh, uh, an agency in Berlin, but it came from the uh, bottom up initiatives. We will uh, pass uh, later through the timeline. But what is important is that uh, in the end of 90s, beginning of 2000, the government, uh, uh, left wing government. Uh, inherited the completely bankrupt city. Uh, and uh, they already had, because of the complicated um, situation in the history, and you already know all of that, they already had so many empty spaces, um, uh, which are like buildings or brownfield sites. Uh, but they also, there was a, a strong um, a strong wave of different movements uh, in Kreuzberg uh, started in, let's say, 80s. So they had political movements, gay movements, uh, uh, student movements, different uh, counter, uh, counterculture movements. So they were already using illegally the spaces that were empty. And by the 2000, the report about the growing, fa the, like the fastest growing sector in the uh, city economy was the sector of creative and cultural industries. And they were uh, numbered over 18,000 small and medium sized enterprises, generating 11% of the Berlin GDP. And in 2006, already 21. So the Department of the Economy 
um, actually started the, the defining the strategies about um, turning the Berlin into kind of a creative city. Uh, so everything uh, was uh, starting at the beginning of 2000s with uh, two reasons. One was the shifting the local economy towards the creative city and creative economy. Uh, and another was uh, the, uh, uh, forcing the tourism marketing agency and making the new image um, of Berlin. And um, it was uh, the temporary or interim use was actually allowed uh, in, the, in the spaces that belong to the, uh, to the public, uh, public companies. So in 2001, there was a company called Liegenschaftsfond um, uh, made for, create to market those publicly owned sites and properties. But it didn't have, at the beginning, anything to do with the temporary uses. So th their role was to uh, so sell the, the, the property that they have. As I mentioned, in 2002, there was the, uh, the integrant concept of creative city. In 2003, completely uh, beside of all these things that are coming from the top down, the bottom-up initiative made the uh, interim organization agency that was working with the property owners and the uh, um, and and the um, uh, temporary users, and it happened in Marzen Helsdorf. Actually, the people who were living there, they had a lot of uh, open spaces and they made uh, an ad like an advertisement or something, like uh, free ideas for free land or something like that. And that's how everything started. And then the um, municip uh, municipality officials and city officials uh, start to, to work with them as well. Um, in 2003, public subsidies uh, uh, went to the, those small organizations that were actually promoting temporary use. And then, uh, the Department of Urban Development uh, actually uh, wanted to get involved with the, um, the to get involved the temporary use into their policies. So at the same time, they did uh, the study about the vacant areas uh, in Berlin and the study about um, uh, people that are using it. So, for example, this uh, this amount of spaces are announced in their website and now when everything is functioning you can just go and visit everything that exists that you can use uh, for a, a short term period. And another study was about the, the initiatives, so it's called Urban Pioneer and I at the end it was published as a book in 2007 by Klaus, Klaus Overmeier. Uh, he's a landscape architect and he was uh, involved also in the Studio Urban Catalyst in 2003. So uh, if you take um, a document uh, that, uh, that is actually listing more than 100 different uh, temporary users in, uh, in Berlin, you will find one in English on the website of the department and also printed book which is called Urban Pioneers. Um, uh, the, the thing is in, uh, in Berlin uh, that they are using the informal planning instruments to implement the idea of uh, temporary use and the most important plan is the local development plan. So it's not a detailed plan uh, as we know uh, if you, when you want to build something. It's a different kind of plan where uh, you can implement your ideas and have a non-stop conversation and collaboration with the different sectors and with the municipality officials. And that the decisions made on that horizontal level are going up. So that's how you make the connection with the Senate department and uh, upside down. The vertical and horizontal uh, collaboration uh, works pretty good for, uh, I mean, in, in compared to Croatia or Serbia, it's like, uh, um, uh, like uh, I mean, it's uncomparable. Yeah. Uh, so uh, also, um, what is uh, what we have to also mention is that there are many uh, social, cultural, and economic benefits. And the benefits are that people are participating in the planning process and they are creating the different opportunities. They are attracting interests and people. Uh, they are creating deployment opportunities and providing the incubator space for the entrepreneurs. But there are risks that we have to be aware of and the one is to prioritize the economic benefit over all others and of course gentrification. Um, and uh, there, are, I mean, the trap of gentrification is obviously very difficult to avoid, but we have to find some tools to, 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 to do it. 
maybe there is a key um, in my PhD. I was I went to a way for a different kind of governance and uh, public civic partnership, and maybe the way in the urban policies where uh, and regulation system where you can um, control it. Um, so um, and basically the conceptual framework for the institutionalization is in uh, seven fields. It's the urban context uh, and development, uh, which uh, it means that the temporary use can be um, like a safeguard uh, e and also uh, revitalize the, the areas and keep them from the different kind of uh, um, misuse and reanimate them and also allow, uh, allowing uh, vacant uh, sites and buildings can uh, reveal the new uh, possibilities. Uh, it's um, a kind of uh, very dynamic uh, feel with the, um, which can actually attract a different uh, public, uh, can attract public interest, but also a greater level of activities, transformation and ideas. Uh, the economic and financial uh, circumstances, uh, the easiest, uh, the, the easy way is to be free of rent or to uh, kind of uh, uh, be on the profit uh, sharing basis. And this is uh, mostly for the private owners um, in relations with the private, uh, private owners. Another thing is the governance policy and, uh, and the planning. Uh, because the municipality can play the very important role by making the permissions easier, the uh, license, uh, license that you can get, also to reduce the entry costs, also to make uh, even free uh, to use some spaces or uh, provide some different funds. And uh, as we uh, know, the experience shows us that they are gaining the political um, points uh, in this kind of thing, so uh, sometimes it can be uh, useful uh, uh, also for them and for, for the civil sector. Um, then the social and the cultural settings, um, somebody already mentioned to engage with the local communities, it can be very important and also uh, if you are in the constant contact with them, uh, you can mobilize the support and mobilize people uh, when it comes to the end. Uh, and to, to maybe provide the long-term uh, staying there. Um, as we said, yeah, as I said about the urban transformations and uh, that's about the physical characteristic and the legal structure, so, so th to develop different um, short-term license or agreements and there are many helpful uh, examples uh, that can be shared. And then with the stakeholders, uh, it's um, what for example, what we are doing now, it's very useful because we are discussing the, um, the, the good practice examples. So it's a way you can learn and it's always easier when you present the case that it works to just advocate for your own thing. Uh, it helped us a lot. Uh, for example, yeah, I have a great example now I remember with the street gallery. When we wanted to, uh, to make it uh, in Belgrade, we negotiated for two years to get the permission to use the street. And we used every single argument that we had. Uh, and first they thought that we were a political party, some youth um, uh, wing, and then after that that we want to open a bar and we were just making so many arguments. And then in the end my friend said, but there is one in Croatia. Actually, we d don't know if there is one in Croatia. And then the, the, the head of municipality said, one in Croatia, we will have 50. <laughs> and that's how we got the permission to, to build. So yeah, that's <laughs> Also an interesting case, yeah. So thank you for your attention. I hope it wasn't boring. Thank you, Eva. Uh, now we will continue and uh, uh, I invite Jonas. He will be moderator of next panel uh, and he will present the guests of the panel. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, Irina. And uh, first of all, I would like to start shortly with uh, thank you, Eva. Um, that was fantastic, especially as somebody who was like for 20 years working with that issue as a German to get a report. I mean, I really said myself, okay, this is the moment I feel old. <laughs> because I really, I mean, this is, uh, this is something like somebody really so fantastically summarizing, mainly, by the way, like you were very much focusing on German examples and um, like being myself connected to all of these people also personally, then you feel like, oh my goodness, this is already history. It's already a PhD. So, <laughs> yep. Um, okay, welcome. And before we are starting, I would like you to, uh, to yeah, I think 
it's necessary to do something a little bit. Um, could you do me? It was good. Could you all do me the favor and stand up one minute? I will use the stage. Um, now, I want to demonstrate something. It will take us a few seconds. Um, could you please introduce yourself but all parallel and in your mother tongue. Yeah? Did you understand? Okay. Introducing like for a few words, like a sentence. I am Jonas. I'm from there and there. I'm doing that and that. I'm here because of. And do it in Croatian, in Croatian, in Portuguese, in Croatian, in Croatian, uh, German, or maybe Polish if you like to, maybe Italian or. English native speaker, we also have that later on. <laughs> um, or in German myself, or in Latvian. So just do it for like a few seconds. I will give you a sign that you can stop, but just all parallel in the same time. Okay? Okay, one, two, three, let's start. Okay, thanks a lot. So, please sit down. So, why, why, why we are we doing this? There are two reasons. I mean, first of all, we have to wake up. No? It's always like an important issue. But second, I wanted to thank you, Irena and Dushica, for, for something. You brought such an synergetic effect with all of these, I don't know how many cultures we are representing in this room, um, you brought us all together in like one and a half days. This is fantastic. So thank you very much for that. So now we have done that. Now we can move on. Um, we have a panel now, and I thank uh, Eva even more for her introduction with this presentation about her PhD because she has opened the floor now for the issue that we have to talk about. We want to talk about municipalities and the role of municipalities and how do they actually, hopefully, probably, or sometimes very effectively, are using certain yeah, tools in order to, coming back to the cases that she demonstrated, um, tools in order to actually promote some kind of different urban development, some kind of different handling of abandoned spaces, and I'm explicitly also not talking only about buildings. Okay, we have in our title of the project that we are representing here, uh, new ideas for old buildings, but I mean, when we are looking on Pula and the example of Pula, then it's obvious we have to talk about spaces, you know, about wastelands, about however we define that uh, monstrous uh, situations that we have seen today morning. I mean, it was all lunchtime. It was, uh, yeah, it's very impressive. I mean, you're really speechless. You don't know anymore what you should say about that. So now I'm, first of all, inviting my, my panel guests. Um, Let's start, first of all, with, I will like, call you in. Let's start, first of all, with Anna from Eidhof, China. Hello. Hello. So, Anna is uh, working for the municipality in Eidhof, China, Western Slovenia, very much on the border to Italy. And, yeah, Eidhof, China is the lead partner of our NIFA project. And uh, as a very tiny, small town in Slovenia, very successfully working with those issues. Good. The second one is Dieter from CSIS in Latvia. <laughs> CSIS is another tiny, tiny small town uh, in Latvia, somewhere 100 kilometers north of Riga. Um, so for those, I mean, main, uh, mainly southern European persons we have around here, it's really far away, very far away. It's on the vicinity of Europe. I mean that, serious. I mean, this is 
How far is it from Celsius to the border to Russia? No. 200 kilometers approximately, 180, 100 something, yeah. So it's really far away. Um, then we have, uh, how would you, okay, let's take Paul. So, Paul Chapman from Lujam in London. Um, should I now really introduce London? Okay, everybody knows London. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, Paul is actually representing the borough of Lusham. So this is something entirely different and he will talk about that later. Then I would very much love to invite my colleagues from Oberhausen, Christoph. Um, Oberhausen, as uh, Agnieszka earlier said um, so nicely, the poorest town of Germany, which in fact is no joke, it really is. It was officially the first town being entirely bankrupt. And they got a financial supervisor, which is really a nightmare for a city, to be honest. I mean, you have to manage that, and obviously they do a little bit something. And last, but not least, and I'm really happy to have that a few here, Yasmina, the head of the cultural planning, no, cultural department in Pula, please. <laughs> So we have uh, the borough of Lujem, London. We have uh, Eid of China, Slovenia. We have uh, Cesis from Latvia. We have Oberhausen from Germany. And we have Pula from Croatia. So you see, like, I mean, it can't be more intercultural. Um, we have a good uh, mix of gender. We have an interesting mix of, naya, it's, uh, say, pro-gender mainstreaming. Um, we have a good mix of ages also. So that all looks very well. Um, now. I, 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 East and Western Europe, Northern and Southern Europe, so everything is there. So, perfect. Uh, Non-European Union we don't have, no. Okay, that's sad. Nearly. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Let's talk on 23rd of June. <laughs> thank you for that. No, not thank you for that, please, but yeah. Um, okay, and uh, now... Uh, a little bit something about the, the gaming rules, yeah? So we have a, a small game now, the game is called Panel. So first of all, um, our issue is what the municip municipality, what a public administration, an authority, uh, very hierarchic, often understood, which it is in fact very often not, or it could be different. Um, what can they do in order to promote a certain kind of different development? And I think it's very important. So we give to each of you five minutes uh, for a short statement. Since we have only around an hour for all of this, I would really love that you keep the five minutes line. And then uh, afterwards, we have a short discussion on the panel. But I would like to, as soon as possible, open that up for everybody to join in and to discuss with the panel. And please, not with me. Discuss with them. Thank you. Um, OK, then, oh, you're doing the mic? That's nice. Um, so, who would like to start? I think the host is actually the one who should probably start. <laughs> Thank you, Jonas. Welcome to Pula, to our guests. And first of all, I want to say thanks. Thanks to Alliance of Reutz and Zelena Istra for organizing, uh, you will agree, such a useful uh, conference in a perfect place for it, Pula and uh, Reutz. The topic is uh, really suitable for this area, as we have not just new ideas, but very old, great quality ideas. And uh, as Jona said, not just old buildings, but areas, abandoned areas, excluded uh, with former military buildings, uh, walls. 30% of the city are ex uh, excluded from citizens. Uh, I know that some of you came a few days ago and you could make a conclusion that we were strongly militarized during the centuries. So the result is uh, over 400 objects, miles and miles underground tunnels, buildings, fortresses which are empty, waiting uh, for new purpose, for new content. And in our case, uh, good ideas are not enough, unfortunately. Uh, some of those buildings are already in use, like uh, Reutz, uh, which is in ownership of the city, but loads of them, as I said, over 400 of them, are uh, falling apart without uh, content and without new purpose. 
there are loads of uh, reason why the situation is like it, but none of them is excuse for us. So I'm really looking forward uh, to learn something today. How can we put uh, in uh, function all those uh, properties we have and to improve uh, life in uh, our city uh, through cultural, social and civic initiatives? Uh, as um, Ministry of uh, Space, uh, Eva, if I remember good, says uh, that uh, Croatia, like Serbia, has a big problems with, I could say here, with um, regulatory framework. Um, we bad guys from city are not those who will change it, but we could always give good examples and um, um, give uh, examples of good practices from the rest of Europe and maybe try to change something. So I'm very interested to uh, hear and to discuss about this uh, term, temporary use. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eva. Christoph. So um, from, from our perspective, I have to say once that uh, yeah, probably it is not uh, normal that uh, from um, uh, actors uh, like like we are or we be trying to, to, to deal with uh, empty spaces and urban spaces that we are uh, even a bit proud of the municipality, the co-working with the municipality. I, I, uh, when we coming from Berlin, I never can imagine that we can work really so close with the with the uh, with, with, with the municipality, this um, uh, gives us a lot uh, a lot of hope and to to push forward the project. It was, uh, let's say, uh, for us really important that they um, that we work in uh, and discuss really from the beginning on in in, in, in one level. It is it, is, it was not hierarchic and uh, 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 that uh, we was really try to, to, to keep forward uh, with the resources or with the condition even what the city has to, to, to keep forward uh, projects. It was, we were really uh, discussing deeply uh, each problems what we got. So it was many from the financial situation even to, the, uh, uh, to make it legal. It was a building under the heritage uh, condition it is a main station where the the construction loads it's like by the airports higher than the normal construction loads so we were dealing like uh, really uh, the the uh, under under difficult condition and uh, but from the beginning and a lot we trust so they 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 um, even we prepared all the all all, all the, the papers or all, all the all the stuff behind so but we have to say the municipality they give this uh, us the the human resources or let's say the 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 the, the the, the person behind they support us, so they don't have put ma in money, but they they bringing uh, still still uh, on from the political level to the municipality level. They said, okay, let's try to to to, to keep this uh, project forward. So I have to say, uh, yeah, it, it is uh, really important to have a, a close relationship even with the with with the muni municipality. And now we have another uh, situation where we need it again. So now we have the contemporary situation about the refugees in Oberhausen. So still we have three thousand. Five or quite 4,000 new inhabit uh, new um, new Oberhausener, new citizens, and uh, we try as fast as possible to bring our credits from the past to this topic. And uh, we have uh, empty buildings, and uh, we, we think that with these human resources we can uh, reconstruct and uh, reuse a lot of empty empty spaces uh, for needs actually needs that we have now. And um, and uh, I think these are new new. New, uh, totally new situations, and even in the other creative fields, we 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 we, we think on this. But to to go over the think, or let's say to 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 come in this situation that we can uh, from the thinking to doing, or let's say to 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 the, this Italian saying between tradire uh, fare c'è mezzo il mare between between the doing and the, uh, between the saying and the doing, we have to cross the sea. So uh, uh, that's what we try. But we can just do this if we bring the municipality. In, but they are in a in, in a in a in a uh, in a situation where they know everything what brings us, let's say, um, something constructive or brings forward or something in a positive way. We tried out. This is a good, really, really good uh, situation, and uh, uh, we wish uh, uh, all uh, other citizens a good municipality like Oberhausen, Oberhausen has. So this is our wish. Thank you, Christoph. <laughs> Dieter, Lotso. Yeah. 
Okay, uh, I I can speak about uh, Cesi's case, uh, Cesi situa situation, uh, and um, from the perspective what the uh, municipality has uh, been doing uh, in last, uh, let's say, 10 years, and um, uh, Cesi is quite a small city, let's say town, uh, 17,000 inhabitants, uh, very historical, medieval town, uh, and a very, um, like, natural um, town and the municipality has uh, set uh, strategically the goal uh, to uh, build economy around the culture and uh, creative industries uh, and they have made investments uh, like uh, financial investments in different um, different buildings uh, uh, but also they um, have uh, like um, gave the opportunity for some private initiatives uh, to bring attention to 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 this uh, city as a cultural city, um, yeah. Uh, what uh, I was al already uh, this morning uh, mentioned that um, the municipality uh, let the people to experiment with the city and in the uh, in the town, uh, and um, yeah. Sometimes uh, like politicians and also the mayor don't understand the creative uh, way of thinking and what they really will do, but they, but they, um, yeah, uh, uh, believe them the the vision what what they are seeing. Um, yeah. So the um, uh, what uh, what is the different difference between uh, Cesis as a good example um, and uh, for uh, probably other municipalities in uh, Latvia that. Um, yeah, uh, they are uh, the mun uh, municipality mayor is uh, is uh, letting uh, people to uh, people to experiment. Uh, they are really acting. Uh, also, the municipality is acting with own buildings, not just uh, li looking uh, like uh, how they are staying empty and uh, doing nothing, but really acting. Um, yeah, and uh, experimenting. Yeah, I think. Thank you, all this. Anna. Hi, uh, I will talk in numbers and then I'll tell you the reason for the numbers. Uh, the municipality of Aydoschina um, has quite a substantial amount of premises in public ownership, in municipal ownership. Um, most of these are um, full or with content, about 5% of them is empty. Uh, all the housings are being uh, are being uh, leased or for non profit uh, for non profit use to socially disadvantaged people, whereas the other 80, about 85 percent of them is uh, are business premises. Uh, these business premises are about 10 percent of these are being leased for market prices to interested companies enterprises, and these are mo mainly warehouses, garages, workshops and the rest are all being uh, leased for uh, non-profit use or non-profit rent. That means for uh, free o the rent is free of charge, they only pay the overheads, um, electricity and heating and water, and uh, or for non-market for non rent, meaning that the, market, the rent is much, much h lower than the, the, the market, uh, actual market rent is set on the market. So what is the reason for these high numbers? I think we can all agree these are very high numbers. Uh, the reason is the public interest. The municipality is um, uh, aware that the municipality exists because of the citizens and uh, it, it works and it should work for public interest. Um, this is our mission and this is our commitment, commitment to the citizens to work in the public interest. Thank you. Um, thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. I think uh, um, after such a statement, we can also close the panel. That was like. <laughs> 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 okay, Paul, it's your words. Thanks, Jonas. Um, first of all, thank you for uh, inviting me to be here and speak here. Um, it's been a really good invitation from Pula, both uh, from the local administration and from the guys here at Reutsch as well. It's really appreciated. Um, and also, brilliant to come halfway around Europe for me and find that uh, among some of you I've got uh, a good friend in common, as Phil Wood, 
who's worked with some of you on a, a project. So uh, he sends his regards, and I'd love to uh, talk to you a bit more uh, later. And, and actually, the work that he, he and I are involved in, uh, I think, has a lot of resonance to what we're talking about because it's taking it on maybe just from talking about buildings and space and talking about people and communities and particularly diverse communities. And I want to tell you a little bit about Lewisham. Uh, before I do that, I thought a little bit earlier to myself that if local government had organised this conference, I think the title would have been Old Use for New Buildings. Because I don't think we're very creative always. We, we have ways of working and that's how we've always done it, so that's how we'll keep doing it. And I think the interface, particularly with the community groups, the NGOs, the voluntary sector, is essential for us in, in, as officers because it helps us to just think a bit differently. And actually, most of us who work for local government live in the places we work as well. So we want to see change. We want to see things done differently. Um, and it's not always easy because we're in structures and we've got politicians to answer to and all sorts of things like that. And maybe through the discussion we can unpack a little bit of that. But Lewisham is the hidden jewel of London. If you've ever been to London, you've probably never been to Lewisham. <laughs> and you miss out. <laughs> Lewisham is where Londoners live. It's got a population of about 300,000 people. And it is in the southeast of London. So if you know your geography of London at all, now I've got to get this the right way around. You've got the centre of London there, the River Thames running through. We're in the southeast. Next to us is the borough of Greenwich, which is now the Royal Borough of Greenwich. And don't they let us know that they're more important than us in Lewisham? So you've got all these things 32 different boroughs in London, all autonomous, all with their own way of working. Very little joined up thinking between them about what to do, how to react to communities, how to involve them. Very much left to ourselves. And then on top of that, we have the Mayor for London, who every now and then decides to stamp his feet and tell us what he thinks we should be doing as well. So it's often quite a complex uh, set of uh, parameters to work within. And added to that, Lewisham is historically one of the cheaper places to live in London, and that's comparatively because London is expensive. And that in turn has led to uh, uh, residents who I would say would, would lean more to the left. So we've quite, got quite a lot of activists, we've got quite a lot of artists, cultural groups, and actually that's part of our identity, along with probably about half of the population who would say that they were from a black or minority ethnic group. So an incredibly diverse borough. And that brings it whole other issues of culture and ownership and, and management and reactions to authority as well that we have to deal with. So I think that'll do for me for now, because I could talk forever. But, uh, <laughs> but we need to move on to the, what we're actually here to speak about. So thanks. OK, thanks a lot, Paul. To be honest, I just got warm. I would like to listen more, but okay, it's up to you. <laughs> um, could you uh, do me the favor, you five, and try to, I give you only a very short moment, but try to like um, figure out uh, the one and only word, like the one word that you think crystallizes all of that, what you have been now talking about. So I'm starting with you, Paul. When you have to choose one word, what do you think? What is the most important paradigm, the most important factor, the most important issue that you think drives a little bit something different in Lujem than maybe in the neighbor borough? So, I've already used the word and I'll use it again. It's diversity. Okay, thank you very much. I'll, I won't say public interest now, okay? <laughs> um, maybe uh, community building. Community building, thank you. Dita? Uh, probably openness in the mind, like, yeah. be open. Thank you. Geduld. Patience. No. Patience. Seriously, that's a translation. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, Christoph? Diversity, yeah. like. Alex said. Sorry? Diversity. The so, same. the same word. Okay. 
And that actually is really interesting. I mean, that bringing that together, especially also thinking about, uh, I think, Rijeka's main issue was diversity <laughs> in the capital Hi of culture. Rijeka. <laughs> <laughs> so they won. <laughs> as a good neighbor in Pula here, we have to say, uh, we have to say, like, uh, congratulations to, to Rijeka that they won the bid book for the European Capital of Culture which anyway will bring a lot of attention in the area. So, and I think also it will bring a lot of added value for Pula because I'm 100% sure Rijeka will not totally forget its neighbor also being a competitor. So I think in this respect, then there will be also some action, some program. Diversity, patience, I, I really love that because that is really important as we have seen earlier from, from uh, uh, from Louis Cham, I mean, you are doing the work there for 30, 40 years, and I mean, that is being more than patient. Okay, not you personally, yeah, okay, probably not, yeah. Um, openness, open spaces, standing over you. Public interest, but okay, you used something else that afterwards, but for sure the public interest is somehow, it stayed in the mind, no? It's, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, Coming back to, 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 to you, Christoph, I mean, when you, when you use the term patience, but also when you think about the idea of um, that what the situation right now with refugees in Oberhausen or the new citizens and inhabitants of the city, around 4,000, um, to which extent, can you a little bit bring that more clear? To which extent the municipality and also with the situation of many abandoned buildings or plots, um, where, where could be the, how to say, mutual win-win um, situation? So f as well for the new Oberhausener as well as for the municipality and also for the old Oberhausener, for everybody. Could you a little, just a little bit bring us that more clear? Yeah. Um, patience, you said, is the English yeah. word, no? Um, yeah, the, 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 to the diversity and passion, it, it's quite, uh, quite near. Pa patience, patience and, and diversity, it's quite near because uh, it's a saying even that uh, the patience is the mother of uh, uh, every language, no? an Italian saying. Um, that, uh, but uh, coming back to this, uh, the, this, this rule of diversity, diverse language and uh, uh, everything. So now, uh, let's say we have uh, uh, in the actual situation, it is this that uh, it is it is uh, an interesting uh, uh, again an interesting topic what refreshed the society let's say uh, it refreshed uh, the, uh, some topics like uh, femi feministic to uh, the, the, the the rule of the uh, of the woman in the society it refreshed uh, uh, so, so so much uh, uh, things what we was thinking before it is uh, it is done so th that is a kind of new new debate and uh, it is in the, in, an important thing but uh, the, to the other part we say okay there there we have a lot of new persons they come in a city or in 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 in, in, a, in a society with uh, a lot of uh, let's say even hope or they bring uh, uh, energy and we we we, we should uh, try to to keep this energy as soon as possible and uh, make them uh, uh, feel part of a, of a, of a positive impact of the society and he gives a lot to do in our society, so how we can how we can mix this? So let's uh, uh, bring it in in this topic what we discussed now here. We talk about empty buildings, and on the other side we have a, a need. We need uh, to, to 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 bring the people in in in, in buildings. So uh, why uh, what we did in the in, in the in the tower? We showed that we can reconstruct the tower by our own. Why we don't try it with uh, the, the the new Oberhaus and they are coming or with the refugees was coming? We we need their uh, their energy or their hope that. They we, 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 would, we have this dream to, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a kind of updating or, or, or of, of, empty of empty spaces together with, uh, with the newcomers and make a positive impact that we can show this is not a, a problem, this can be also a solution. Thank you. Um, it is not a problem, so it is a solution already from, from by itself. So. Um, you were mentioning openness, Dieter, the open-minded attitude. Um, what, what an open-minded attitude could bring as an added value to the city again? I mean, if a municipality has an open-minded attitude, is reaching out in another kind of language, um, where, where could be the benefit? 
at the locality. I mean, what can a city really gain from it? The entire city. I'm not talking now about the municipality authority, um, like that, what you are kind of representing here in the moment, besides Christoph, but more like what the entire city could gain from it. What is the benefit? If at all there is a benefit, I hope so. Yeah, there is for sure. Um, I think there is, uh, this is um, um, open minded that brings new ideas because, uh, yeah, uh, each, uh, each as uh, uh, yeah, I yeah I have some uh, some Latvian uh, sayings in my mind, but uh, um, yeah, it brings new ideas, new uh, initiatives, uh, new activities, uh, and uh, yeah, new perspectives for the old uh, old places or old uh, situations. So yeah, and and it's more interesting and uh, yeah, for me I, I don't know if for for others uh, yeah, but but uh, yeah, it's more lively. The city becomes more lively. More lively. Yeah. So actually, we talk then about something like vit vital atmosphere. Vital, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, we we see this in uh, Tsesis that uh, uh, I live in uh, that town t for ten years, and when I moved, uh, it was like. Uh, um, uh, the feeling was very, very depressed, and afterwards, in those uh, ten and last five years, uh, new new people were coming in, uh, seeing uh, in Tesis what uh, local inhabitants didn't see, and they brought uh, new activities, new different uh, different things, and and the city become became uh, more lively. Yeah. It's a very strong statement, actually. If yeah. a, if a municipality is really like managing to to try that, like you said, experiment mm. also earlier. Yeah. I yeah. don't say it's really managed. I mean, that would be nearly ridiculous mm. if you manage that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this seems to be like then an, a very important factor. I mean, what we are talking about right now, as you can feel, I mean, nearly all of this are the, the so-called soft skills, the so-called mm. yep. soft sure. issues. We are not talking at all about the physical buildings. We're talking about something completely different. I'm sorry, Anna, but I still refer to the public interest, or that what you said earlier. Okay. Um, I, I catch you there. <laughs> um, what you said earlier about the the statement that we could close the panel, like the the, the we are there because uh, the citizens are there, and they actually we are just their representation and their executive. So, does a city like Eid of China, like a small city, a small location? actually has more chances to, like also Pula is not very big, um, has a smaller city more options, more possibilities in order to carry that out? That, for example, your neighbor, I mean, was 300,000. I mean, is there more, more like, say, are you more close to the inhabitant? Uh, well, I can't say for sure, because I've never been in a municipality next door. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, yes, I think so. We can uh, reach to our citizens uh, closer, we can talk to them, uh, we can uh, listen to their needs and address them more intensively. Okay, so, but I mean, uh, let's make it practical. Like today morning we were like driving around this city, this beautiful city, and uh, in all its diversity, beautiful city also like the language of, of aesthetics here I mean it's everything I mean you're standing next to a Roman temple and you're looking on crans in the harbor this is uh, this is crazy that's fantastic I mean I love that could you imagine a spot in this town where the municipality officials also Yasmina and other ones would have a chance to reach out to like say like hey here we are bombard us with whatever questions, ideas, and interests. Could you locate a space that you have seen so far? Like a, a specific space? I'm not sure I understand you. OK. <laughs> um, thinking about the city and what you have Pula seen so far. Pula, 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 what you have seen so far. Do, can you make out a place where you think like you could really like, like reach out to people, like invite them there, and then talk to them? It's a tough uh, question, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, I was thinking that, maybe I should answer myself, maybe that's easier, because I was <laughs> asking such a stupid question, I'm sorry, but um, I was thinking, I'm actually not thinking about droids, that's already existing, that's working fantastically. 
I was thinking today we were, okay, Paul, unfortunately not, we were standing on the top of this fortress. And I was thinking when I was standing there, this would be the place you could actually talk to people, like together, like meeting up on the hill, on the absolute top, with the inhabitants, and creating together at that space. And it's already like a place for parties and for festivals, so why not inviting people? Sorry for that dumb question from Jonas. Okay, it's my fault. No, I it's my fault. I didn't <laughs> warn you before not to ask me hard questions. Oh. <laughs> okay, diversity, Paul. What, what does diversity bring us? I mean, this is this term that we are all abusing. I mean, Jane Jacobs already has like bombarded us 1959 with her book about diversity. So what the heck is diversity all about? What does it bring us? Well, in Lewisham, we have a, a, a motto that says the diversity of Lewisham is our strength. So actually, it creates community. Um, but it also is difficult. It's difficult to manage. It's, um, you know, if we're thinking about buildings and space, there's a demand for buildings and an expectation sometimes that as a local government we can just hand them over. Um, and that's not always the case. It's, 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 it, it can create tensions. There's an expectations that um, maybe particular groups or, or, or misunderstandings of particular groups are favoured over others because they have a space, whereas some don't. And some of that's historical, some of that's when, when groups come in, different, uh, different nationalities and that. Um, and I think as well, there, there's a bit of a tension there between, well, we know best because we're the municipality, you know. And actually then, if you've got the NGO groups or local community saying, no, we know best because we are right at the grassroots here, and therefore we've got the ear of what's happening. What that creates is, is, is confrontation rather than dialogue because you, you, you then defend your position. And that makes the, the management of space and buildings and things like that much more difficult because expectations are very different about how they can be used, why they can be used. Um, but I think one thing that hasn't been mentioned necessarily yet by the panel is money and funding is the other massive player in very all good, of this. Very good, thank you for that. Um, particularly the fact that most of us in local government, I don't know about the rest of you, but we have a third less budget than we had five years ago. And that's a lot. We're talking 90 million pounds less than we're used to working with. And that changes by necessity the way that we work. But we're not very good at change. I mean, it, it's that typical thing of, a, 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 a municip municipality is more like one of those massive ships that it wants to turn, but you have to sort of program it in about three hours ahead in order to make the, the thing. Uh, so you, you, you see what I mean? And yet you've got grassroots people who can react and know what's going on and, and set things up really organically. And somehow those two things need to appreciate each other's difficulties, but also the strengths that they both bring as well. And I think that's the really exciting part we're at at the moment in Lewisham. And we have got buildings and we have got space and we are, I hope, and, you know, the guys that I'm working on the Origins project with um, would hopefully back me up with this, that we're, as a, a local authority, actually been quite creative in thinking about how they can be used. And we don't always get it right, but at least we're trying, at least we're trying to change some of that more confrontational dialogue. Okay, thank you very much. That were very important words. But in the same time, um, when I'm when I'm like when I was preparing for this, um, I saw a lot about that. What we all are like identifying with the situation at our municipalities and at our places and our projects. Um, I I came across two words which I very often come across in my work, but exactly here and at this place and preparing for this panel, I came across two words. The one word is commitment. Being committed also to have patience, for example, to carry out diverse actions and to promote diversity. 
um, like Louis Jem is part of the intercultural city network in Europe. That is one promotion, you could say, like in this moment, it's an action. Um, and the other one, out of also public interest, diversity, passions, and so on, is trust. Um, when a municipality says they are actively engaging and whatever, like for example, here in Pula, like municipality of Pula would offer really like, let's work together on this space, on one of the fortresses, for example, for sure, I think, there would be developed a certain amount of trust out of that on both sides. Like, the city would gain trust by its inhabitants, and at the same time also the whoever actors are out there and dealing with the space would like suddenly feel trusted. Um, when you are thinking about uh, commitment and trust, just go backwards then, Paul, uh, when you think about commitment and trust, how, how difficult is it actually to gain trust? Is there a recipe? Oh, I wish. <laughs> that would make <laughs> life so much easier, wouldn't it? Um, trust is about commitment, isn't it? It's about realizing that other ways of thinking are not the enemy. It's not wrong to think differently. And actually, I, what I'd like to, to say from a, a local government perspective is I think we want the same things. It's just we've got different ways of thinking about getting there. And some of ours is to do with structure and accountability and democracy in, in some ways. But that doesn't mean, as officers working for those municipalities, we don't want to see the best possible outcome for our residents. And we might not agree about the process of how you get there. And I'd really love the example here because, you know, as a, as a government official, I can't condone squatting buildings, for example. But look what's been achieved through that beginning here. Um, and, and, and I'm fascinated in that journey and that way that somehow something that could have been quite a, a, quite a conflict, what are you doing? Why are you in there? You've, you've, you've come around to see here in Pula, maybe, oh, hang on, this is, this is benefiting us. And that, that, that involves a change on both sides as well, I think. And I think this is a really good example here. And, and I think, I, I, you know, maybe you could explain yeah. a little more from, from your perspective why you, you sort of thought, oh, we like what they're doing in Reutsch. Yes, they started off squatting or, or using the building and we, hmm, not sure about that. But what made you change your attitude towards what they were doing? I always have the same attitude. I never change it. Uh, I always like what they are doing here, and this is a great example. As you said, we mentioned that we have uh, ideas, buildings, but there is no money. If you ask me, in most cases, we don't need money to put uh, into motion uh, something, like Reutz. They didn't get money to create this factory of creativity. They do it by themselves, and after that, uh, city helped them, but with some funds. So uh, behind that, uh, um, we also didn't mention the, the very big issue. Uh, if you ask me, it's social passivity. If you forgot those people and representatives from Reuters, the rest of uh, citizens are really passive and it's, um, uh, it's coming with the feeling of being empowered to change the things. How to build trust at that moment, I really don't know, and I would also be happy to have a recipe, so if you find it, give it to me. And because um, also we mentioned empty buildings and problems, but I will give you one example. A month ago, we went out uh, with a public call uh, to collect uh, applications for uh, civic initiatives, cultural program, exhibition, concerts, and so on, free of charge, in a space which is uh, equipped and ready to use. And we got just one uh, applicant. It's for Fort, Fort Bourguignon. Yes, so, you know, we have loads of examples and on the other side um, NGOs are searching for some empty buildings to use it 
we don't know how to deal with it uh, because uh, as Dushica said there are lots of obstacles and barriers which we don't really don't know how to uh, you know and uh, to go forward but as I said we are open to learn and we are also very slow but things are going on day by day a good example is uh, again roids uh, uh, we have uh, here uh, like a uh, free free translation coordination for participative management and we all together city and NGOs trying to do the best with what we have but also the same model this toolbox we wanted to use and start to use in another building and it was disaster in the same city so and, and that's interesting because I think local government likes to have one answer and oh it worked there we can do it again and actually well, it's, it doesn't work like yeah. that does it and our experience should tell us but we still wish there was that recipe because yeah. it makes our job so much easier I have the feeling Christoph wants to say something you look like you're bubbling um, if we talk about money I think uh, we 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 have to really uh, rethink the distribution about money, even on the min municipality size, uh, and even on the regional size, or let's say in the in the other structures. And I I think um, the 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 small or let's say this this new uh, kind of uh, structures they are built. They have to uh, have trust even uh, on resources di di distribution. As I mean. The, the I, I, I think the municipality must give them more uh, more trust uh, in, in, in in money uh, even because I think they 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 will f find a better solution or a contemporary solution because uh, to be clear uh, in, in in the rural region where we have uh, let's say it, it is a is a poor uh, structure there and even the money it's not so much but still they have on the regional size uh, uh, a lot of money but goes in the theaters or in in industrial museums but they, they, they even they becomes old and let's say they have a lot of in in, in, in infrastructures paid by public money and uh, a lot of uh, employed person paid by the public money but they they do quite uh, they are quite yeah they are quite uh, uh, let's say they, they are not any more active let's say uh, uh, to make an example to be clear uh, we're doing a, a contemporary uh, a refugees uh, kitchen project where we build and construct with refugees together a food truck so we need a space an office where we can go in we don't have this facility but we want we want to do it together so we're asking the industrial museum he have a lot of uh, a huge uh, metal office still running with a lot of public money and uh, the, they every say oh it's a nice idea but on the end they don't open the doors so where we have to go we go in the inner inner running uh, 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 private uh, uh, metal office industrial office they open uh, uh, the door and said you can construct it here by us but why the theaters or other public subvention they they thinking uh, and dreaming in model of 2030 yeah uh, in in big future dreams, but in the actual situation, they 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 are plumpy. Yeah, that is the same like by the by the by the, by the clock of the tower. They are plumpy. They don't move anymore. No, they they they, they are still conserving themselves. So they, they say this happened a lot. And then we have to think where the money must be gone, or where we have to 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 to, to give this money in this trust. And I believe that in the in the in the uh, in the smaller scale, in the actors of the smaller scale. There are better invest the money than in the in the plumpy big institutions. So it's the same uh, situation in Pula. Uh, NGOs are producing more programs uh, and content than uh, institution, uh, but um, we, as the owner and uh, founders of those institutions, we upon the law we need to ensure money for uh, their uh, programs and paychecks and what is left is for NGOs but also the problem is on uh, the I again need to mention a legal framework which is totally out of date the main law uh, in a culture is from the period of Tujman and needs to be changed because uh, it uh, uh, per the perception uh, through this law for NGOs that they are just a one-year project 
and that's it. You are financing their projects uh, just uh, year per year, and they, are, they do not have any s security. They don't know what will happen next year with them. So first of all, again, we need to change it. Uh, we thought that we are on our way to, to make things uh, happen and change, but then we get a new Uredba, a new law, which, <laughs> which uh, uh, now it's even worse than last year. And <laughs> so next month we are going to ministry. This is exclusive uh, uh, news for our NGOs, and we will try to uh, give them suggestions from um, terrain, from field, yes, and try again to change things. Will we be successful? We will see. But at the moment, yes, I agree. Uh, those who are producing quality programs need to be paid for it because we are not finding quality NGOs on trees. They need to uh, get paid for the, uh, their ideas and work. And no matter if they are institution or NGOs, it's totally the same for me. Okay, thank you. But I, I, I actually wanted to open also. Now we are getting a little bit in the end start, so let's have like some possibilities. There was already somebody saying he wants to say something, so you have your own mic. Oh, yes, oh, I, I oh, start oh, first. <laughs> <laughs> this is Anarchy. Yes, I have. <laughs> Krenut ću ovako i jednim drugom observacijom. Igranje tim prostorima, starim, novim, napuštenim je samo igra manipulacije i moći. Ljudi koji odlučuju o nekim prostorima u gradu igraju se s time da mogu određivati koliko će biti nekih prostora iza neka. S druge strane, oni dižu na te zapuštene na određene prostore ovu hipoteku i nakon toga mogu davati plaće i sve ostalo. Znači mogu... Primjer je jedan taj. U zadnjih, u posljednjih 30 godina četiri puta sam gradskim vlastima dao spisak od preko 30 napuštenih malih prostora u gradu koji i dalje propadaju. Znači pola sata u krugu kad hodate pulom možete ih ovoga naći još i danas ovoga. Ne samo za sebe da sam ovoga tražio te ovoga male prostore, nego sam tražio još da neke druge ljude, a i neki drugi ljudi su tražili i što smo dobili? Ništa. I dan pota smo mi rekli ovoga, ma, čuj, ti se možeš skinuti, tebi oko ne treba radni prostor, to je satelje oko ovoga. Znači, samo tu je ovoga igra manipulacije, oigranje moći i druge strane ovoga dizanje kredita jer imaju nekretnine s kojima oni mogu igrati. Dalje neko. Thank you. Only please, the next one using this mic, don't be so loud. I didn't understand the translation really. Is there anybody who wants to reflect on that? Uh, on Croatian on e or on English? Možda na hrvatskom. Igre, prijestolja igre moći, to je zabavno slušati o tome. Obzirom da nisam iz odjela za raspolaganje gradskom imovinom, ali... Ovako, to je dala ovoga odjelu za kulturu i odjelu za nekretnine. Govorim jedno i drugo, znam što govorim. Ok, ovako, mogu objasniti ulogu upravnog odjela za kulturu vezano za... Ne treba meni, njima. Njima, za gradske prostore. Dakle, nijedna udruga pulska s područja Pule ne plaća najam za dakle korištenje gradskih kad su u pitanju gradski prostori dakle svi prostori daju se na uporabu bez naknade i uglavnom po istom principu dakle na deset godina kao što je slučaj i sa rojcom na koji način se dodjeljuju ti prostori dakle dakle Upravni odjel za kulturu postoje već drugu godinu i na našu inicijativu upravo to tražili smo od susjednog odjela, dakle jedan popis prostora koji su prazni, koji nisu tržištu zanimljivi, obzirom da dva različita odjela imaju dva različita cilja. Njima je prvenstveno cilj da se brinu o tim nekretninama i da prvenstveno od njih prihoduju 
sukladno zakonu. Ukoliko ne mogu ostvariti nekakav prihod na tržištu, jer te nekretnine nisu tržištu zanimljive, daju ih na raspolaganje, dakle na uporabu bez naknade, što udrugama sporta, invalida, kulture i tako dalje. Mi smo uspjeli ove dvije godine dobiti koliko se sjećam nekih 5-6 prostora u kojima su se otvorile galerije dobili su dakle pulski umjetnici na temelju predloženih programa koje je cijenila komisija ponovno odabrana od strane udruga institucija ocijenili su te programe na temelju tih programa dakle umjetnici su dobili svoje prostore konkretno u Kandlerovoj nakon toga evo sad u ovom trenutku mogu slobodno reći smo pikirali još dvije zgrade i ići će se po istom principu kao i za te prostore u Kandlerovoj. Bilo bi najidealnije kad bi se spojili upravni odjel za kulturu i za gradsku imovinu, onda bi sve dali na raspolaganje udrugama, ali kažem imamo različite interese, tako da ne znam kome ste se obratili, mi inače ne raspolažemo u prostorima, ali dajemo pisanu podršku. Do sad se nikad nije desilo da smo se negativno očitovali prema upravnom odjelu za imovinu u smislu ne, nemojte toj i toj udruzi dati na korištenje taj i taj prostor, tako da ne znam kome ste se obratili. Ali vrlo zanimljivo zvuči to što pričate, simpatično. Hvala. Mi smo imali prvijek prezentaciju very inspiring presentation. I loved, I loved that. I already said to my colleagues from Latvia that we, with the Latvian Architecture Society, have to invite you to give us a present. Now, serious, I mean, that was fantastic. From your perspective, and you were talking a lot in the beginning, you said like, uh, yeah, the questions of, of legal, the, the legal issue, the, the illegality or whatsoever. I mean, have you found municipalities in all of these projects that you were like demonstrating and showcasing, have you found municipalities being active, promotingly, promoting you and the projects, or was it more really a hinder? I mean, was it like an obstacle? From my experiences, uh, from my experiences I think uh, municipalities uh, have a severe of problem of uh, defining a problem, of defining what is actually important for the society, and then uh, recognizing what could be the, the solutions following this. You know? I think they are uh, they are mostly looking for a kind of quick opportunities uh, to I don't know to solve some infrastructural problem or something like that. But I, I don't uh, I rarely see uh, the the real awareness of what is a social problem inside the community and then to see what is, what is uh, how they can how they can solve. It. I think um, when we are talking about old buildings, it's. Um, its uh, first question should not be uh, what can we do with this old building how can we use it you know the first question should be what is the real uh, social um, problem what what can we what do we really need to do in this uh, city or um, maybe it can be a small problem whatever and then uh, think about old buildings how to use them you know? that's uh, that's that's the thing you know because wherever we were entering into this uh, relationship with the um, municipalities where all we always have to uh, explain them that these people actually need uh, this space you know that should be something that they understand by default thank you is there any other question or command or i don't know um critical voice Irena. maybe just one question for paul Okay. Um, I really liked your example of new uh, co-working place uh, hub uh, in uh, old city hall because we were visiting it and it is, it is really example how local um, authority can push some new ideas. So it wasn't bottom up, uh, it was more top down approach. You made place making workshops, you invited citizens, uh, you suggested the idea so it's kind, kind of different than here in Croatia, if you can see. Yes, <laughs> but it started off a little bit like that, what you were saying. It actually took us internally three years to decide what to do with the space. And my colleagues who were part of the, the event that we had, as soon as we knew that space was empty, they knew what they wanted to do. But other colleagues in other departments, oh, it's a bit risky. Oh, no, no, we can't do possibly do that. The best thing we can do is shut the building down and mothball it. And then they got the bill for how much it cost to do that. And it said to them, ah, okay, 
we have to find a use for this building. And in the end, they came back to my colleague's first idea. And I think that's because the teams that we were in were having those conversations, but the decision makers maybe weren't. And maybe we didn't sell it well enough internally, but we got there in the end. Um, and the, this, the, the enterprise hubs will be opening up uh, this summer, which we're really excited about. And uh, uh, tomorrow, actually, if, if you're here, I'll show you a couple of pictures of what that actually looks like and explain it a little bit more as well. But I get where you're coming from, but I don't think everybody in the municipality does that. We, we, unfortunately, it's this, I think you mentioned at the beginning, it's this hierarchical thing. And it often gets blocked at a really silly place where somebody is thinking about money more than people sometimes. And we get really frustrated as officers when that happens as well. We, you know, we, you know, we really passionately want these things and yet the argument somehow comes down to money. Oh dear, and like, like that explanation, the example I gave that at the end of the day, the decision that they made turned out not to be right. It, it cost more to keep the building empty than it did to do something with it. But we had to go through that process, unfortunately, because that's local government. Okay. That's... <laughs> 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 Any other... Okay. Uh, I don't know who was first. Um, Christian, I think, actually. Sorry, Robert. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, for your panel and your discussion. Where should I be? Not here. And there's a question for uh, anybody who's in public uh, service, I guess. Uh, I think the people in the room are all more or less engaged and more or less believing in the viability of this kind of uh, movements and this kind of initiatives. But I think there are no deciders or public deciders or private deciders who are present and Paul was thinking, uh, speaking about at a certain point it blocks. So when, you, when we speak with you about different ways, maybe more viable ways, more inclusive ways to do things, maybe you hear us. And then you bring the story a level higher. And then the discussion changes into a risk management discussion. And I would like to invite you to tell us a little bit how should we adjust our discourse so that you can bring our story to the level where the decision is taken. What are the risks that they see that we have to comply to in, a, in an intelligent way? That's a very intelligent question, um, a very clever question. Who? Uh, I will give a word to Paul. He said a, a very great uh, sentence uh, a few minutes ago that sometimes we really want the same things, local government and NGOs, but uh, there are different ways. Um, uh, in my uh, work uh, every day, uh, what I understood is that uh, NGOs sometimes do not think about some regulation which we need to follow those regulation free fr frameworks, but they just want to realize their ideas, which is great, but uh, it's not so easy. We understand that it's slow process, it's boring, and it's not logical, but we need to follow those uh, present regulations just about regulations i think the ngos they they or like from our perspective we 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 read the regulations we we studying the regulations and we let's say regulations are uh, even uh, it is uh, it is not so easy sometimes it's too much bureaucracy but it helps even to to go away and to know if we respect this way and go this way we come to our our dream so we, it is not that we f just think uh, uh, we don't need regulations let's say on the other side we have corruption and regulation helps us even a bit to respect some rules and to come there so we go this way and we do a lot of bureaucracy to to to, to come there and we, uh, we, we let's say we, we 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 for us it's not a task the regulation Yeah, I have Anna, uh, some things, but first of all, um, I'll have to reply to that. Uh, first yeah. of all, thank you because um, that's important, really yeah, seriously. Just yeah. um, first of all, uh, you have to be aware that we uh, municipalities are not gods. We have to obey the national laws, the European laws. We can't change them just like that. Uh, second, what's uh -huh, second of all, 
money is always the issue. But we are turning for EU funds, for national funds. Maybe you can do that too. And regarding your question, uh -huh. um, my uh, answer to you is come with a solution, a comprehensive solution. Do not come and demand something. We want that. Give us that building, give us that. Come, explain your problems, listen to us. We will find a consensus, a compromise. We will find a, a, a way. But offer us a, a, a concrete, comprehensive solutions. Don't make us our work harder. Make it, make it easier. Paul? That was great. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd, I'd also say we all live in democracies of sorts and you've all got elected politicians who are meant to represent you as residents and voters in your areas. There's nothing that, uh, and this is a little bit off the record, but there's nothing that the middle managers like less than a politician knocking on their door and asking them why they've made such a decision about something when their residents are writing them letters and sending them emails saying, why, why can't we have this, why can't we have this? And then I think it comes down to, well, you might not get it all, but where can we work together? Where can we get that compromise? So use the political system however oh, drawn out that might be, but that's what your elected officials are there for. They're there to represent you. Um, and then we're there to act on the decisions that they make. So if we, it's like a pincer movement, maybe. Um, Excuse me, can I try to push it a little further? I mean, we are pushing time right now okay. a little bit. <laughs> and still Urban wanted to say something, but no, Christian, that make your it's minimum there's, statement. There's, a, there's a, statement. a positive interpretation of the situation and there's a negative one. And if we speak about uh, regulations, and I'm not judging uh, an attitude because it is true, it is legal, and it is risk, and it is insurance, and it is all that. But legislation was a centuries of construction, of a social construction that is used to ensure well-being for a whole community. And legislation is being bent for certain reasons and a little less for other reasons. So the flexibility that is necessary, which is the question of illegality, which is present in a lot of the references that we're seeing today, what is necessary in the mental uh, set, what is the mental discourse that you need so that the stuff could be bent in the, in the favor of that community? That's maybe not a question, but just... Exactly. I mean, I love that as a statement as well, yeah. Um, Urban, please. And then we actually have to close, unfortunately. Uh, a question of scale. Uh, what makes a municipal to municipality easier or more possible? A large-scale project like ROITS, with, uh, so it has a lot of NGOs who work together, who work closely, and there's, there is some synergetic effect, or a, few, a network of small uh, shops which are empty and it is, let's say, maybe more accessible and maybe more uh, available. So any, any suggestion, what is, um, what is the difference in small spaces or large premises like uh, ROITS? Okay, um, understood or not? It seems like not really. Is it, is it easier, because the question is extremely important, and I mean we are, s we are coming across that constantly, is it easier for a municipality to deal with a small kind of project, or is it better to deal <laughs> so with a big sorry, project? The easiest answer, which Anna just says, it depends on the money. <laughs> if the money's there, the small one. If there's more money, the big one. It's really basic economics, and I think Again, what was said about a, a, a comprehensive solution as well. If, if you're coming to a municipality helping them solve a problem that you've both got, you might get more of a, a, an ear. If it's, if it's more a demand, we need this because or else. Mm, it, again, it's, it's about partnership and trust, and I think trust has been mentioned a few times. Um, and find, find someone in the municipality that you have their ear. So I say that a lot of us who work there really, really want the best for the, the places that we work. Find the people who do that, the ones who aren't just there to push the papers. You might, you know, sort of get an argument between you maybe about what, what to do. And it's not easy and it takes time and it doesn't always work. But 
I think that collaborative trust making thing is good. Sorry, Asa. Yep, yep. Um, Christoph, but very fast, please. Um, by, by, by big projects, I got the impression that there is always a, a, a certain dangerness behind to, to lose a lot of money. So what we never should forget is where is the target group? Is really a need there? And uh, because mostly where it goes by big projects, there you can burn out a lot of money. What can so helpful for a municipality? So be careful. Even some nice uh, uh, architecture presentations and everything, because uh, the municipality believe them. But uh, what that's coming out of the end, it's a, it's a big risk. I I actually would like kind of as my statement in the end, yeah, or want to give a feedback, I think that your question was extremely important because what we are doing here is, please don't fall, there is like, there is a gap between. Um, uh, so what, what we are talking here about is, I'm, I'm just break it down now to the smallest participant here in all of this, and this is CSS or the school Asashi program, that small co-working space in a tiny little town. This tiny little town has up to, in the center, 50% of the shops on the main street abandoned. If you would come with a great project and tell them, we know how to solve that program, a problem, I am 100% sure the municipality would not immediately jump in that because it would be a hell of a risk to do that. It's in a huge capita, and what Irena just very silently mentioned, there is a completely different issue. There is a social capita also. And let's not talk about the financial capita only. Let's talk also about the social capita. I mean, if the project is ending up like the clock tower, that really like hands-on social capita, hands-on, the people themselves on the shops or on the fortresses, and the municipality says, yes, go for it, go for it, then Actually, it could work also with a small risk only in terms of money. But the moment to involve really huge sums and huge projects is always carrying the risk that in the end, the municipality or the NGOs or somebody would like really suffer in that, like seriously suffer. While a small, small project like you are doing, and it's really a small project. When our network will come over in June, you will see it. You can't compare to Lloyd's. I mean, this take, take, uh, 100th part, 100th part of Lloyd's, or even less, like a thousandth part, and then you then you have the small place there. Yeah, so um, that is possible. That is realizable. This is like built on resilience on the topic in the area that is there. Something that is touchable, tangible. Yeah, and I think that is important that we that we understand what we actually are able to do. What is our capital allowing us? That we don't try to overstress ourselves. And in this respect, for sure, this is also something very important, breaking it down to Pula. I mean, for sure, I can imagine that both parts here in the city in the moment have really like, uh, how to say, yeah, um, in German I would say in a very radical, easy way, Hosenschiss. But um, meaning like, it's really a rude word in a way. But it means like you are really scared. You're hell scared of all of these military territories out there and what to do with it. I can imagine your situation very well. The same as I can imagine the NGOs and the civic society and the culture here who's demanding, for God's sake, there's all this space. Let's do something with it before it's getting completely damaged and done. And I mean, it's just a natural place like we have been walking through the second place today that was a well, Alunga, that was like a natural reservoir. <laughs> it was like unbelievable, you know, the beauty in itself. So I think, I think we just started to talk about some issues. I would like to thank all of five of you very, very much, very much. <laughs> and um, I would uh, like once again in the end, to thank most of all, the most important part always in something like this, even if you were very silent in the end, thank you audience that you listened to us. Um, we have still um, one uh, 
representative. I, Theo, could you come? Uh, Theo will talk about public good management model. Theodor Tsilakovsky from Right to the City. It's really interesting topic, so please don't go. Stay a little bit longer and listen uh, his really interesting lecture. Thank you. Uh, please put your headphones uh, on. I'm going to speak in uh, Croatian. Dakle, mi smo odlučili promijeniti malo ovu zadnju prezentaciju, znači ona neće biti u formi prezentacije nego u formi razgovora, zbog toga što mislim da bi prezentacija na kraju ovakvog dugog dana možda bila malo teška, pa ćemo ju olakšati na ovaj način. Prvo bih htjela predstaviti Teodora Celakoskog, kako se ono kaže, šećer na kraju. Meni je zbilja drago da on postoji, znači ona je onaj mastermind koji je iza mnoga strateškog promišljanja što se tiče tema o kojima smo danas pričali. On je aktivist organizacije Pravo na grad. Vodio je u suradnji sa kolegama i drugim organizacijama mnoge kampanje. Zapravo je vrlo poznata osoba u javnosti, međutim kako ovdje ima jako puno ljudi koji nisu iz Hrvatske, onda naravno da postoji potreba da ga predstavimo. Da li bih htio možda još nešto reći o sebi, na primjer? Dobro. Pa evo mogu, I can say just a few words that I'm trying to combine both from one side the contestation process around the issues of privatization with the right to the city and on the other side to build a kind of alliances around the institutional innovation. So this is both sides of the process of, let's say, handling with the public with and within the public domain. Dakle, jako često koristimo pa i u naslovu ove njegove prezentacije neke pojmove koje bi možda na samom početku trebalo malo pojasniti. Pa ću ja onda pitati te na samom početku šta je to zapravo civilno javno partnerstvo u upravljanju javnom infrastrukturom. There are several approaches to, uh, to let's say, um, how you could manage the uh, public infrastructure. Um, and, um, or common infrastructure. And um, uh, there are basically, let's say, um, two existing approaches that are over dominating uh, within the process. One is to uh, to build the legal structures that are totally public and controlled by the by the public authorities and on the other side um, there is a logic of let's say building autonomous zones around the, the common or public infrastructure so um, from squats to the to let's say some kind of independent spaces that could be run with uh, with um, uh, by the individual organization or collectives formal or informal so but the, the whole idea about the civic public partnership or collaboration um, is uh, that um, from uh, how to bring from the both sides of these uh, uh, these models how to bring advantages of these models so stability that Uh, that the public domain or the public type of running of infrastructure is something what is lacking in this um, autonomous, uh, let's say, uh, auto uh, autonomous, building autonomous approaches. Um, and um, on the other side, um, public, publicly run uh, infrastructure is usually, let's say, over dominated by rules by let's say uh, some kind of petrification of the processes domination of the resource management logic within these institutions dependence in many many political environments dominance 
of the uh, politics in these uh, in these type of institutions. So there are a lot of, uh, let's say, from the newly developing commons movement, there are a lot of, uh, at the European level, there are a lot of talks about the disadvantages of this type of uh, publicly run um, um, infrastructure. So a model of civil civic public partnership is something what is trying to bring uh, let's say possibility of self organization but but we within the public domain uh, within the uh, um, publicly organized um, and accessible infrastructure is one of the let's say core principles of, of the civic public uh, type of partnerships. Um, so um, from one side, the civ uh, so the collaboration is in the core of, of, this, uh, of this logic. And there are, let's say, two basic level of this collaboration. One, la one layer is collaboration within the civil society in some local community. Um, that means that different organizations, formal and no informal, are willing to address the issue of, of uh, their needs and uh, of, uh, let's say, organ or their organization around the needs for uh, infrastructure. Uh, on the other side, willingness of the public authority, local public authorities is crucial for this model. Uh, to be uh, uh, to be um, uh, developed. So uh, one layer is uh, uh, collaboration with the inter, uh, let's say, uh, intrasectorial within the civil society, and other is uh, transsectorial with the public. It was okay until now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so um, two layers of collaboration. So it is very intense, process-oriented, uh, let's say, model, um, and it could be there could be different, let's say, layers, uh, levels of formalization of this type of uh, partnership. So it could it could be fully institutionalized, like two entities, local like city or a local authority together with a formal network of organization and initiatives built together the institution mixed type of institution hybrid type of institution that um, uh, that uh, co govern the infrastructure that is uh, uh, that uh, that is on disposal in some local uh, community so but on the other side, you could, ha you could have a, um, let's say, less formal type of uh, collaboration, uh, like here in Reutz, where you have somebody that kind of coordinates um, uh, the, the, the relevant issues that are important for uh, governing over the infrastructure. So um, that is basically about the, the what is the principles and the logic of the of the of the civil public partnerships. Ali kako je uopće došlo do razvoja tog koncepta odnosno how did you come or why did you develop that concept of public civil partnership? So uh, civil public partnership is wider let's say wider term for different type of uh, different type of uh, uh, collaborations around the governance over the over the public and common goods, but spe specifically in Croatia, it was um, there are let's say two or three um, uh, sources or processes that uh, brought the the whole thing into into light. One thing is development of the Nat let's say natural is result of the development of the independent culture scene and civil seen in, in Croatia that um, was successful in the last 15 years in bringing different, let's say, networking, collaborative, 
a building constituency uh, uh, within the scene. Um, so the the scene, the uh, civil scene and uh, independent culture scene, were in these 15 years start to be uh, important um, impor important social player and uh, somehow uh, influential toward the uh, public uh, authorities and um, so there was a several public foundation established in Croatia that financing civil society and independent culture also financing not only for program purposes but also for operational cost for institutional cost um, so we were somehow capable of imagining further collaboration with this type of let's say uh, 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 within this type of environment uh, uh, it's important to say that it is changing now this uh, environment we have a new government that is really uh, some part of this government is even pro-fascistic and they are really not interested in any kind of, let's say, arms land body type of decision making uh, in, the, in the process. So basically total arbitrary control is something what they are really much into. So they started to dismantle different institutions uh, mm, that were important for the sustainability of the uh, civil society, organiz or organized civil society in Croatia. So, so, so w one, let's say one result, uh, one process was kind of um, uh, 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 that brought the the whole thing into uh, into the logic of civil public partnership. Uh, is this one of development, the scene and the need of the scene itself? Uh, 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 Dinko presented uh, most of these cases that were presented as a buildings or architectural approach um, are having uh, this type of uh, let's say civil society uh, networking that demands the uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, civil public uh, collaboration around these infrastructures so this is kind of process of growing and, uh, and um, kind of self-understanding of a scene, independent culture scene, especially in Croatia, to, to bring this uh, idea into life. Um, the second, let's say, source would be the, the dynamic and the discussion around the issue of commons, where the, it started to be kind of uh, European uh, left fetish uh, against the neoliberal marketing forces and against the public and state uh, dominance o o over the our over our resources uh, where this commons movement uh, in most of the uh, argumentation is um, um, emphasizing that the the some kind of third model of community running and uh, uh, commons and commonizing resources um, uh, and avoiding the state and the market is something what is crucial for for new phase of emancipation and and confrontation of the uh, uh, neoliberal uh, uh, d dominance um, so but uh, the reaction from uh, from many fields and one of these uh, processes are uh, also in Croatia is to react on this as something what is also kind of fetishization and uh, and and fantasizing around the the possible uh, the possible solutions uh, so uh, some kind of statement that we have to democratize and commonize the public so that means that to involve more participation in decision making in self-governance within the uh, public domain is something what is uh, uh, should be stressed and emphasized in the process of uh, of uh, uh, of emancipation uh, 
uh, and uh, creating movements around the resources. So one of the, one of the important experiences of ours is fights against privatization of water, highway system. Uh, now we will have a, a process of privatization of healthcare system. And there are a lot of you know, cycles of privatization of, the, of our resources, common and public goods from one side. On the other side, privatization of services, public services. And um, although in Europe we have a trend of recommunalization of, let's say, water management system and stuff like that, uh, bringing back them from the concession uh, into the uh, uh, publicly run, uh, uh, run um, services. So in that sense, um, at the European level, there is a process of going back, but the, within the Eastern Europe, we are kind of repeating the this uh, 1990s logic of uh, the privatization and market in all sectors of society will um, bring some advantages or will uh, be successful in in uh, manage management of these resources and stuff like that so um, so let's say this process of, for instance, uh, confronting the process of privatization uh, last uh, two years, it was around the highways, for instance, in Croatia, we gathered half a million signatures in, uh, in uh, uh, two weeks uh, against uh, this, and we stopped the, this process of concessioning. Um, for instance, at the very early stage, uh, five years ago, we stopped with uh, even collaboration with some uh, f vari various um, social groups, um, uh, privatization of first, uh, first let's say step in privatization of water management uh, system. We have uh, weight, waste management system also endangered, and uh, there are some starting process o over this. So, um, so. As I said at the beginning, this confrontation logic and thinking about how to deal with these resources, um, uh, we agree that public, so this is the one of the, the commons paradigm uh, and let's say ideology, is uh, pushing that public, doma public domain, uh, running of things within public domain is one step towards the privatization, basically. So uh, this is the way how it e easily going from our hands of la us as a community to run it into hands of public, the state, that is basically serving the, the, uh, the interest of the market and the ca capital, and that this is only a temporary uh, formation uh, in this transformation towards the privatization of these resources. So, um, so this argument is pretty much valid when you see how the social state is dissolving um, and how uh, more and more of the social services are uh, and, uh, and public goods are turning into privatized uh, resources or privatized management that uh, suck the resources uh, from these uh, from from these services and resources into private pockets, while uh, devastating the interest of the majority of the populations. So, um, in a way, our our answer to this was to to say, no, we can't es ex escape from this logic into this uh, uh, autonomous type of thinking because it looks like it is only a uh, uh, kind of uh, phenomenon of uh, um, uh, neoliberal state in terms of that neoliberal st uh, uh, status can allow these pockets of resistance or autonomy and that uh, it is important for those who emancipate them through this autonomy in these groups but for the uh, wider political 
let's say, advantages, we should go into more politicized formats and uh, interactions with and fighting with the government for more participation, co-governance, uh, self-management formats of uh, running of a public infrastructure. That would mean that you have something in a public domain, but it is, uh, bit, but it is uh, organized and, and governed by the users in uh, some format of, um, let's say, uh, autom autonomous, uh, it's not real autonomy, of course, but some kind of uh, self-regulated uh, manner. So th that would be th this, let's say, second source or process of, so it's more conceptual. And the third thing is um, uh, uh, th this energy from what we have in these fights against privatization. So we in Croatia, don't, we don't have a process of privatization of public culture institutions. But overall dynamics is uh, leaving these mainly bu bureaucratized institutions, uh, uh, leaving them out of the, any kind of relevant social, uh, s uh, social uh, and political process. So th these, so th these are basically uh, three sources of uh, our specific development uh, around the public. Uh, uh, civic public partnerships. Okay, uh, going back to uh, the concept of public civil partnership, uh, the concept is relatively new in Croatia. Uh, even though you have already uh, responded to my following n next question, uh, please shortly, what are the problems in the implementation of this concept in Croatia? Uh, so, basic problem is that uh, uh, because the, the it is not it could end up in the institutionalized formats of of this part type of partnership basically it's process oriented and it's really uh, the, the, the whole thing is coping with a, a lot of demands that are coming from any any kind of uh, let's say uh, process uh, uh, that involves different stakeholders you know that 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 they don't have a b same background uh, they have different specific interests and stuff like that so for instance the collaboration between the independent actors like civil society organization in itself is a some kind of demanding process so building constituency of people around certain issues um, here around the issue of governing of the space is something what is also a political process. So it's not given that people will or organizations will collaborate together. So in that sense, uh, this is the first step of, uh, let's say, uh, 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 problem. So in less developed spaces, in, uh, in uh, smaller, uh, in small, smaller towns or uh, uh, villages, it's hard to establish this type of uh, 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 n network of, of those who are interested in and powerful enough to persuade the local government to give some space and stuff like that. The second problem is um, willingness of the of the this uh, let's say power side of the story, the local government because it is usually, it is not really willing to, to, uh, to collaborate around this because they have to somehow, they have to, uh, get, uh, to, to abandon some part of their power and say, okay, we can run this on our own, but we say, no, we will give this space and we will do, do this together or we will produce a framework where you could run on yourself. So government, local governments could find a lot of, uh, lot of benefits from this type of approach, but mainly they see the, that they lose the power in this process. On the other side, when you have a huge countries where local authorities are also huge, like in, I don't know, 
when we in Rome, like when we had a, uh, some kind of exchange with Teatro Vale, uh, the famous uh, case of uh, uh, law citizens together with actors decided to uh, not to give the, 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 the this famous uh, theater to for the private use for uh, restructuring into some I don't know mall shopping mall or something like that. Um, they had problem because it's a, such a huge, you know, public infrastructure in terms of, you know, governing of it. Like you talk with when you talk with the city of Rome, this is like talking with in Croatia with the whole state. So in that sense, where you have a, a huge countries where local communities or local, let's say, authorities are hu huge, you have a lot of intermediary processes and dynamics so you can't it was for them when we talked about partnership with local government for them it was like a mm, first the government is not interested at all and it's so distant so in that sense this uh, 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 some kind of close uh, some kind of uh, being close is need for uh, for this type of let's say collaboration otherwise it, it, it doesn't function um, uh, another problem is uh, poten uh, potentially very uh, important here is that if if the community of organizations or initiatives formal or non-formal um, even with this partnership with the uh, government if they are not enough open to deliver the procedures for public e public use of these spaces it's uh, uh, then these uh, these civic public partnership could uh, function as a kind of uh, uh, collective privatization of public like uh, um, hijacking the public by the uh, by some groups or collectives so in that sense very important thing is um, how these infrastructures are open for those who are not part of, let's say, this uh, partnership agreement. So in that sense, building, for instance, uh, user councils and stuff like that as a kind of um, uh, body within uh, this type of partnership where different, so broadening this from the civil society organization as an intermediary for different interest groups to participate in uh, governance, open it uh, even more beyond these organizations for the wider public and having uh, tools for communication around this and having open criteria for usage of space. This is something what is uh, highly important. For, let's say this space, um, I'm five years ago when we started the idea that uh, together with the uh, local organization through some kind of process of planning that it is needed to have uh, open spaces that are bringing those inhabitants here to work together uh, and to have a um, public space for uh, delivering uh, certain content that it is highly important to have it open for others to use this space. So in that sense mm, fulfilling the public uh, interest and public needs uh, in this type of infrastructure is also crucial in, a in order to avoid this type of, um, I say, this collecti collective privatizations. So these are main, uh, main problems that, that we see. Of course, one specific problem in Croatia is that we have now government that wants to dismantle all the processes. We've been successful in uh, pushing last govern government to allocate something like 12, 12 million euros uh, into uh, not buildings, but if uh, like uh, software of these different locations for the purpose of development of social culture centers. Um, on these locations that were demonstrated uh, uh, by Dinko, but not only these are like examples, but the idea was to have uh, 
10 to 20 different, uh, different spaces where, uh, ex where existing or uh, there, are, there, are, there is seen that uh, demanding this type of partnership is something of, um, of interest for financing through this uh, European Social Fund um, sources. But uh, as I said, the, the whole problem here is that you, you need a kind of, uh, uh, let's say, a large portion of social capital between the, uh, all stakeholders, let's say, who, who should participate in this. And when you have an alienating uh, 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 government, when you have a dispersal within the civil society, it's not functioning. So I would say the, the basic problem with this model is that the, it's too advanced for the situation if there is no enough trust and the process of collaboration on all of, all of these levels. Okay, thanks. Uh, I, I am aware and I was aware that we are very late and that we have to close for today. So I forgot to tell at the beginning while presenting Theo, uh, his very important, the most important role in defining the model of the development of the partnership model that we have today in Royce. And uh, yeah, this was, I mean, without him, we probably w wouldn't be able to do in it such a successful way. I mean, we are in a transition period, we have to develop it more, and we will always rely on his, uh, on his help. So um, I, I, I have to close this conference because we are half of an hour late. If you want to have a final. Uh, no, I said everything what I want. <laughs> okay, thank you.